what will happen in part four of Daily Bread from Margaret Gabby's Parables from Nature. Our little Robin Redbreast is tucked up in his ivy home, and winter is here. But that terrible storm lasted for weeks without intermission, or if it did intermit, it was but to a partial thaw, which the night of frost soon bound up again, as firmly or more firmly than ever. Many other birds beside himself came to the holly tree for berries, and it was wonderful how they disappeared, first from one branch and then from another, but still the robin sang on. He poured out his little song of thanks after every meal. That was his rule. Other birds would jeer at him sometimes, but he could not be moved, much moved by jeers. He had brought his bravery. He had brought his bravery and his patience and his hope into the field against whatever troubles might arise. And a few foolish jests would not trouble a spirit so strung up to cheerful endurance. I will sing the old tortoise awake yet said he many and many a time when, after chanting his little thanksgiving in the holly tree, he would hover about the spot where his friend lay asleep in the ground and think of the spring that would one day come, bringing its mild days and juicy plants and its thousand pleasant delights. I do not say but what it was a great trial to our friend when, after dreaming all these things in his daydreams, he roused up at last by feeling himself unusually cold and stiff and was forced to hurry to his ivy home to recover himself at all. The alternations, too, of winter were very trying. The long storm of many weeks ceased at last, and a fortnight of open weather ensued, which, although wet and cold, gave much more liberty to the birds, and allowed of greater plenty of food. The robin could now hop once more on the grass round the fountain, and get a few worms, and pick up a few seeds, and he was so delighted with the change that he half hoped the winter was over, and he sat in the laurel tree by the tortoise's cave and poured out long ditties of anticipative delight. But the bitterest storm of all was yet in store, the storm of disappointed hope. Oh, heavy clouds, why do you hang so darkly over the earth just before the Christmas season? Oh, why did the fields become so white again, and the trees so laden with snow wreaths, and the waters so frozen and immovable, just when all human beings wanted to rejoice and be glad? Did you come, perhaps you did, to rouse the tender pity and compassionate love, the hearts of all who wished to welcome their Savior with hosannas of joy? But who cannot forget, if they read the gospel of love, that whosoever does a kindness to one of the least of his disciples does it unto him. Surely, thus may the bitter cold and the trying weather of a biting snowy Christmas be read. Surely it calls aloud to everyone that now is the moment for clothing the naked, for feeding the hungry, and for comforting the afflicted. Heavily, heavily, heavily it came down. There were two days in which the robin never left his ivy-covered hole, but hunger took him, and at last, to the holly tree by the little gate, its prickly leaves were loaded with snow, and on one side the stem could not be seen at all. Was it his fancy, or was the tree really much less than before? 
he hopped from one white branch to another and fancied that large pieces were gone. He peered under and over, picked at the leaves and shook down little morsels of snow, but nowhere, nowhere, nowhere could a single berry be found. The little robin flew about in distress and in so doing caught sight of a heap of holly, laurel, and bay branches that were as laid aside together to be carried up to the house to decorate its walls. He picked two or three of the berries from them as they lay there, ripe red berries, such as he had gathered but lately from that tree. And then came the gardener by who carried the whole away. He flew after the man as he walked and never left him until he disappeared with his load into the house. Its unfriendly doors closed again, the little wanderer, and no one within knew of the wistful eyes which had watched the coveted food out of sight.